Where are you at? Let's start with Miami first, obviously, uh, as they continue to win games. And Pittsburgh lost. So where are you at now with Clemson losing? You guys are kind of just taking that over by uh, by the neck. Yeah, you know, the Duke game, you know, defensively they are what they are. They're very poor on the back end. Uh, the defensive line's been a little bit disappointing in terms of creating a rush with the front four. But this is a very, very exciting, entertaining team from Miami. Uh, Cam Ward played a great second half. I thought he missed a few throws. And look, Cam is unbelievable. He might be the leader for the Heisman. I'm biased. He's my front runner. But, you know, Coach, we were watching that game. And when he threw that cross field thing, the look on your face said it all. Why? Why? And these are the things like, look, if you really want the best out of Cam Ward, you don't focus in on the 30 passes he misses. You focus on everything he did wrong because that's coaching. You know, and I, the other play that really bothered me about that game, and again, I'm his biggest fan. I think he played great for the most part. But on that play, he had Damian Martinez right into the flat on third and six, move the chains. Right on the and sideline. Shannon, yeah. Shannon Dawson said something yesterday at the press conference, our offensive coordinator. He said, I, I, I love the routine play. I like the routine. I think that was his way of telling Cam, Cam, you don't have to be Superman every play. He goes, I, I, I enjoy the routine play. Patrick Mahomes, routine play. At what, what point do you think it bites him? At what point? like When they play a the team ball. that can keep the pressure on for six. One thing I know about this offense, it wears people down. And I will give Mario Cristobal a lot of credit. He's playing more tempo than ever. Now, we have not gone full Art Bryles, 60 minutes of pace and space. But we are judiciously using no huddle, quick tempo. If you see, this is why Miami scores a lot in the second half. They wear teams down defensively. They do. The other other play that bothered me, and again, I think it was very selfish, but this, again, this is on Mario Cristobal. You either coach it or you'll allow it. The game is won, 53-31. We throw a shot down the field. Cam drops an absolute dime to Riley Williams. We're at the five-yard line. You know what? Here's what you do. Cam, come out. Go, Come out to a large applause. You're done. We're going to yeah. hand the ball off. We run an RPO, and he gets absolutely smoked. Now, yeah. before all you people say, well, he was – no, 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 no. Is it about Cam or the team? I, I don't care who Cam Ward is. I want the team to do well, and, and I would ask those people who disagree with me, do you think an injury to Cam Ward would affect this team at all? He took the hardest shot the whole year on a game that was over. If I'm the coaching staff, I come here and say, Cam, if you're staying in the game, I want to tell you this right now. We are getting under center, I formation, and Mark Fletcher is going to get the ball three times. We're not doing – because, again, there's a coach that said, if it's not okay in losing, it's not okay in winning. You know who said that? Mario Cristobal. Yeah. So I, let's it, live to our own words. This is all about culture. We're getting there, but I really think Cam has to say, you know what, I'm kind of important. Let me just hand the ball off. There was no need for that RPO because he took the hardest shot in a game that was over. And let's say he would have broken his back. No one would be saying, well, he's trying to get a six touchdown. Fans have got to be a little bit more high. The, I, these fans, they want Cam Ward to win the Heisman so bad. I, I don't think they use logic. I think that was very dumb football at the end. Yeah, That's like my opinion of it. But is they're it, 9 0. Is, 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 is it like. I don't know, short-sighted, narrow-minded, uh, because Genty basically has been knocked out of it, and no one wants to talk about that because he basically plays a half of football games. And so, like, he only plays a half. Yeah. You, you think they're trying to keep the pressure on because they got to get more plays for people Look, to see? He already had five touchdowns. But you know what's funny about Cam, as good as he's been? I don't think he's played a clean game yet. No, I'm going to say that. I, I don't either. I, I, I feel like he puts his back against the wall in the first half of some of these games, and then, and then he saves the team and, put, and, and takes it off the wall, and then we praise him. But it's like, look, it's I'm going to be honest here because, again, uh, Confucius say the standards I set for you is what I think of you. And I think with Cam, high level. Yeah. If I think, like, oh, you, you had three interceptions, but you played a good game, I probably think you're a terrible quarterback. That's the truth. I went to the Virginia Tech game. He was responsible for, I believe, three turnovers. Yep. That's never a good game, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I went to the Cal game. He was one of the reasons why we were in the hole with that that cross-throw interception yep. made at 28-10. Okay? I went to the Florida State game. I thought Florida State, he actually played a very mature, 
clean game. I actually thought that was growth. Um, I'm going to Atlanta this week for the Georgia Tech game. If Haynes Kings plays, I think that could actually be a pretty tough game. Haynes Kings, I, I like him. He's turned into a good, solid college quarterback. But I want to see a game with cameras like you don't turn the ball over. You don't put it at risk. You take the routine, easy play underneath. Football, and it, anything in life is about mastering the routine at a very high level, time and time again. Um, now Miami has to kind of figure out what they're going to do in the defensive backfield. They got one of their starting corners or one of their guys that plays a lot injured on a late interception, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, Jadeus Richard can come back sooner rather than later, although I think he's out for the year. So now Miami's going to have to shuffle that secondary, and it's time to get some younger, faster players into that rotation.